Let, yeah, let's talk about the economy now, obviously. And to, to a large extent, the data that we saw dated backward looking. But just give us your assessment, your current assessment of the economic situation right now. Yeah, uh, good morning, David. Um, when you look at yesterday's data, I think it's pretty consistent with the uh, uh, sort of the divergence we're seeing in the economy. The zero COVID local outbreaks had a negative impact on consumption services, and you saw that in retail sales. Uh, at the same time, we are seeing upside surprise in the industrial sector helped by exports, but also uh, the energy production, coal production, oil gas production, and uh, uh, manufacturing uh, in terms of equipment, machinery, uh, industrial robots. So it's a very uh, different picture. Uh, uh, some area very weak, some uh, area uh, quite strong. Uh, so adding up, that could uh, imply why the PBOC is taking a more targeted approach. Okay, and that takes us into the list, a very long list of measures, 23, that the PBOC and the, the Forex regulator SAFE actually put out yesterday. What would be the top one to two key implications for you from that list? Yeah. I think it, the you know as you said it's a long list of measures, but you can think of it in uh, a couple of buckets. One is really about the COVID, uh, helping SMEs, helping services, sorting out the logistics, and the second is really about how do we offset the weakness induced by COVID restrictions so that the overall growth is still reasonable, and that's where you see languages on property sector, uh, on infrastructure, uh, on relaxing some of the local government financing vehicle uh, uh, borrowing. Um, so I think the takeaway from there uh, is really, um, you know, we expect more easing in the property sector, more uh, uh, pickup in the infrastructure investment uh, as the major uh, offset from uh, for, for the COVID restrictions and uh, the ne uh, negative shocks that we're experiencing. And the last bucket is on the FX front, uh, which I think is quite interesting because uh, just a few months ago, the PBOC was worried about uh, seeing why getting too strong. Um, but yesterday's uh, statement uh, suggests that now they are shifting the uh, concern uh, toward worrying about the Fed hiking and uh, potential capital outflows. So 5.5% at this point for a full year, is that still achievable? Yeah, um, just to be clear, we are forecasting 4.5% growth for this year. We get a lot of questions um, uh, in terms of the, the target. Um, mm. you know, our view is that if the government really want to get a 5.5%, uh, they could. Um, you know, Chinese government uh, has a lot of resources, and uh, this is, uh, um, you know, they, they can deploy uh, funding and projects to get to 5.5%. Uh, but that's not our baseline, uh, because we see the drag from COVID, the steel heating property sector, uh, and the government's view that uh, it's not just about this cycle. Certainly, we can get this quarter or this year up, but what about the next year? Um, so in that mindset, uh, what you want to do is to ensure employment stability, financial stability, and that's uh, behind our thinking that uh, uh, more like a 4.5% growth this year? Well, the jobless rate is at 5.8 percent, and you and I can agree that it's very difficult to gauge the employment situation, at, you know, for an economy as big as, and as diverse as China with one single number. What do, what do you think the unemployment situation is right now? Yeah, uh, measuring unemployment uh, is difficult in China, given the rural area um, and, uh, and also, uh, you know, the, the public and the SOE sectors. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, a few indicators suggest employment uh, problem is getting more concerning. Uh, unemployment rate, and especially among the uh, younger uh, individuals, younger workers, is, a, is a quite high. And uh, anecdotally, these internet companies also announced some layoffs. And we know the property sector is in a very depressed situation and, uh, and a lot of people are losing jobs. So I think the overall assessment is that we're seeing pressure on the labor market. And that's probably why the government, uh, you know, in terms of adding up all the uh, communication and easing measures, uh, they are trying to uh, stabilize the labor market and putting more focus on that front. Very quickly, your outlook for this current quarter, and do you think those policy measures will work if these restrictions stay in place as far as COVID containment strategy is concerned? 
right? This quarter is very much determined by uh, COVID control. Uh, if we see that uh, uh, mm. the local lockdowns and uh, are effective and we get to a point uh, uh, by the end of the month that uh, uh, COVID is under control, uh, then the policy easing can uh, make appearance in May and June. So it's very much driven by uh, the COVID development.